Good morning, my name is Tania. I'll be the chairman during this presentation block. We shall start with Dana's presentation. Are you ready, Dana? Dana, are you ready? Hello. Yes, I'm ready. And uh, you I have think? 15 minutes to present your work, followed by five minutes of questions from the audience. We remind everyone on, on the audience to please mute your microphone. Okay. Um, Dana, please yeah. go ahead. Okay, can you see my screen? Can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So I'm delighted to be here and be able to present our work that is called Formal Representation of Natural Language Elements in Multi-Agent System Based on Self-Organization of Distributive Neurocognitive Architectures. The paper proposes an approach to the formal representation of natural language elements based on um, multi-agent recursive architectures for solving problems of uh, speech recognition, understanding, and synthesis. This approach, based on intelligent software agents with uh, developed cognitive architecture, makes it possible to represent linguistic information at all le language levels, from specific morphological to abstract semantic. Uh, a big amount of language processing systems used uh, subsequent architectures that were easy to assemble but had limited functionality. About 30, 40 years ago, it was first discovered that distributed system can be a possible alternative for a natural language processing system, since it's possible to develop interaction between autonomous, specialized, and distributed modules. In order to model an artificial intelligence system able to represent elements of natural language while solving complex problems such as speech recognition, understanding, and synthesis, a multi-agent cognitive approach can be used. This approach is based on the computational abstraction of multi-agent neurocognitive system that model the architectural correspondences of neural connections in human brain which makes it possible to develop a model that can learn independently, recognize and measure data flows using the acquired knowledge, context and experience. Uh, <clears throat> in our system, we have combined two methods of representing linguistic information in a multi-agent system, lexical structural and cognitive linguistic approaches. In the first case, agents are associated with morphosyntactic categories of words and display appropriate behavior. In particular, they exchange messages and search for agents with whom they can enter into contracts, thereby building relationships of a more complex level until the entire multi-agent model of utterance is represented. In this case, uh, in this ca case speech recognition understanding and synthesis is carried out via the grammatical rules of the language. This idea is close to the dependency grammar theory, since it involves application of the principles of following and dependence of immediate constituents of utterance, which ultimately leads to the modeling of the structural representation of the statement. The second approach uh, assumes that agents of different types are presented in the system, which corresponds to the different language levels, morphological, syntactic, semantic, and lexical. In the system, the lexical within which the morphological and syntactic levels are implemented and semantic levels are implicitly, implicitly represented, which is due to the assumption that we need two types of agents uh, to represent the meaning in the system, that is ag agents' words and agents' objects or concepts. Word agents store phonetic information, paradigmatic and syntagmatic relations. Concept agents contain their knowledge bases a description of an object corresponding to a given word. 
a contractual relationship is established between two agents and store different information about the same language unit. The activation of one of them entails the activation of the other. In our opinion, such division of agents represents corresponds to the Broca's and Banneker's areas in brain. Broca's area is responsible for the production and memorization of speech, and Banneker's area is responsible for the activation of images and concepts. At the lexical level, agents of different parts of speech are implemented, main and functional words. When a word appears in the system, it initiates the creation of its corresponding semantic agent. In addition, depending on the part of speech that is agent type, begins to search for words that can conclude a contract with it. A request for a contract is a, a question corresponding to the part of speech of the word. For example, agent's words that are nouns ask question. Who will buy information that answers the question, who or what? In the agent knowledge base, this is represented as follows. Only agents uh, related to noun by syntactic, syntactic relations can respond to such requests, that is adjectives and verbs. Thus, the conclusion of contracts causes the creation of structures of higher level, namely a noun phrase, a verb phrase, etc. In accordance with the dependency grammar, uh, relations are established between words that are verbs attract nouns, pronouns and adverbs to themselves. Nouns attract adjectives. Thus, agents in the system are considered as units of knowledge and the compositional meaning of the sentence is derived via interaction between agents. They try to find those agents with whom they can conclude an interaction contract. Obviously, contracts are not made randomly, they are based on the principles of dependency grammar and energy search. Agents interact by sending direct and general messages. Thus, agents of verb type send messages to nouns and pronouns to objectify their valency. The process of speech synthesis begins with training. The word document is entered into the system via the editor, that is a user interface to the system. As the input was made from the keyboard, a lexical agent of the noun type is created. This type of agent as, uh, initiates the creation of the corresponding semantic agent of the object or concept type. Contractual relations are established between them, which guarantee the recognition of themselves and the contractor in the future. In our conception, we doubt that objects are not remembered separately from the context. That is, an object or a new world is not reflected in memory without the corresponding action verb. For this purpose, in the knowledge base of agent of the object type, there is a rule which can be described as follows. If an agent of the object type appears in the system, it initiates the creation of the corresponding action. For this, for this, it's necessary to send a request to the user. What does the object do? In response to this request, we enter the verb appeared. For example, it can be any other verb that we need from the keyboard, after which an action type agent with the corresponding name appears in the system, which in turn initiates the creation of an identical lexical agent. After its appearance, the action sends a request to all objects. Who will buy information that answers the, the question? What does it do? An object agent that has the status, I'm waiting for my action, reacts to this message and a contract is concluded between them. Then they send their data to the next more complex level to create an agent responsible for this event. Uh, the article presents the implementation of the combined approach of representing natural language elements. Its indisputable advantage is the combination of two approaches that allow simultaneously creating agents for each individual word 
taking into account its part of speech affiliation, linking them with contractual relations based on the dependency grammar. In addition, the relations of language levels from morphological to semantic are realized. This combination of approaches allows the system to be dynamic, which is explained by the presence of pre-created agents in the system, as well as the possibility of creating new agents of different types during the learning process. Uh, I think that's all. Thank you for your attention, and I'm ready to answer your questions. Thank you, Dana. Now we will proceed with the question from the audience. If anyone has any question, please raise your hand. I have a question. In, in this uh, system that you are uh, creating, uh, is it possible to uh, realize the perception of uh, time passing? I mean, uh, a situation where uh, something that is, is moving uh, and, and, and linguistically uh, detects this passage of time and, and uh, in some sense uh, registering it. Yeah, thank you for your question. Yes, it's uh, indeed possible because this system uh, consists of different uh, different um, constituents, and one of them is camera. And camera is used uh, uh, by the system like we use our eyes. And when we see something, and or when the system uh, can uh, capture something using its camera. Uh, these events are created in the system using these agents, and of course, time is captured as well, according to the different uh, uh, perception tracks that are about uh, vision in this case. And we have time agents as well, different kinds of agents, not only linguistical one, but uh, time, location, and others. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I see we have no question. Okay. 